What's up guys, Damien Keys here, welcome back to the channel. So when it comes to releasing music, you have all of the control, which is great. We don't need a label, you can do this all of yourself, except that does come at a price. For a start, there's all of the things that you need to do, and then there's all of the things that you think that you need to do, and then there's all of the things that everyone tells you that you need to do that you think that you need to do. It all gets very, very confusing. So what should you actually do? What are the priorities? And in this time where you don't have that much money, how can we make a small amount of dollar go a long way? So today's video is all about what we can do with just a hundred dollars to release your music. Nice. Now, before we get into what you should spend your hard earned cash on, the first thing I should say is the most important thing to invest your time and your money on is yourself, is your brain, is your knowledge, is your experience. And that doesn't have to be expensive, but that's the most important thing for you to know what to do, for you to know how to do it and when to do it and why to do it in order to release music the best way is the best thing that you can possibly put any time, any effort, any energy, any experience, and any money in, because that is something that will stand you in good stead for the rest of your life. Now, when it comes to spending your $100, I have done these in an order, basically from most important to what I think is the least important. And number one, the most important thing to spend your money on when you have a music release is a photo shoot. What? I know what you're thinking. What the hell has a photo shoot got to do with releasing music and getting people to listen? But there's method in this. The photo shoot and a really strong photo is the most important thing you can possibly have because it's the first impression. It's the first thing people see. It's the first connection that people are gonna make. Oh, I've seen your, your picture. Do I buy into this and therefore will I go further? Will I start to read? Will I stay in your Instagram? Will I press play and listen to the music? All of that comes from one picture. This is about building a party. You're bringing people into your party and therefore the first thing that they're gonna see is the picture of you. Do they relate to you? Do they have a connection to you? If you get that, you take this to step number two. Everybody is obsessed with numbers and growth and attention and getting attention is very, very important. However, what's the point in getting attention if nobody sticks around, if no one pays attention after they've seen it? They've just gone, yep, I saw you, I don't care. That's what the photo will do. It's the difference between maybe getting into a magazine and getting front page of a magazine. Now I understand you can absolutely do this yourself. You've got an iPhone, you've got friends, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. But a professional shot, one which is your best hero shot, which says everything about you, that is not easy to get from a friend with an iPhone. So if there was one thing for your release that I would spend a hundred bucks on, it is a pro photo shoot because when people come in and they see it, they're more likely to stick around and listen to your music. Now, if you're saying to me, don't worry, dude, I've got the photo shoot all sorted. We don't need that. What's next? The next thing would be a music video because music is attached to things. Music needs to be attached to something to promote it. And I know you can attach it to a Facebook ads, which we will get onto, which will send people across to Spotify, but less of a connection. And even then, when you're sending people across with your Facebook ads, you still need to have something visual so that people connect, swipe up, and get across. A music video is a staple. And if you do not have a music video when you are about to release music, you are wasting a colossal, massive, massive opportunity. What used to happen is an artist would make a video and that video would go on some kind of MTV and that would promote the song. Whereas now it goes on YouTube. And so when you look at artists releasing over the last couple of years, some of them are releasing four, five, six music videos. And the reason for that is they know that if they can attach music to a video, you will watch and listen. Then if they can do it again, then you will watch and you will listen. If they can do that multiple times, that song has gone in and you are much more likely to start going across to Spotify to put it in playlists and listen to it more. 
This video gives you something to talk about. It gives you something to get into the one-to-ones. It gives you social media content. It gives you advertising content. This video is so important to the promotion of your music and it doesn't need to cost the earth. Now back in the day, which was 1995, Michael Jackson and his sister, Janet, released Scream. And between them and the label, they made the most expensive music video that has ever been made, I do believe. It was around about $15 million, which is a crazy amount of money. But at the time, that was how you promoted album sales and tours and merch. Nowadays, it's slightly different. We don't have those sorts of budgets. So what we've got to do is we've got to get in and get out. It doesn't need to be expensive, but it does need to capture some attention. It does need to be interesting and remarkable and conjure up what you're about as an artist. Now, history is littered with huge artists who started off with more homemade videos, with a bit of energy, a bit of raw grit. If you look at Oasis and Shaker Maker or Coldplay and Shiver or Through the Wire by Kanye or Praise You by Fatboy Slim, these were not expensive. In fact, they were pretty much free, but they did have that energy. So you can do this yourself. You don't need to have really expensive gear. You just need to have some creativity and you do need to have something that makes that connection so your audience sees it and just says, yes, I am part of your tribe. I stand for the same as you. This is a great song. Now, if you're saying, Demo, don't worry, I've already got the photos, I've got the videos, what's next? I've still got my 100 bucks. Brilliant, well, how about this? Content is king, we know that, but one piece of content means nothing. You have to be making content time and time again, and therefore things like performance videos or interviews or vlog style videos, they will get you more attention, especially when you're consistent with your social media. The problem with that is I keep seeing videos where the background of your video looks horrific. People are doing performance videos in the shower because it sounds good. And I think, wow, it sounds great. But unfortunately, there's a big shower head sticking out your head. And that does not look cool. So how about spending a hundred bucks on DIYing your room? So take this room as an example. We flew 3,000 miles from the UK. We are now in Austin. We are staying in an Airbnb. We arrived and we had to make do with what is around here, which was a couple of lamps. So therefore, a couple of things that we did, we bought one light, which you can't see, just over to the right, which is a box light, cost us 30 bucks. And then, as you can see, a couple of blue lights in the background, 20 bucks for four. And all of a sudden, with a stand underneath the camera, you are pretty much there. Now, I'm, I'm not saying it's gonna win an award from you know, for Martin Scorsese, but at the same point, it's much, much better than having a radiator one side, a plug socket the next, and you're sat on the bed. It doesn't take a lot for you to take the standard of your videos just up 20 or 30% so people will pay more attention. And just like the photo, just like the music video, this is about first impressions. First impressions really, really count but it goes to show that you don't need to spend millions to make a shot look semi-decent. And number four, Facebook ads. Now, I know you've been waiting for this one, but spending a hundred bucks on Facebook ads, is it worth it? Well, let's put that into perspective. Firstly, Nike, or Nike, if you're American, spend $3.8 billion per year on advertising their brand. So, this hundred bucks might not go a long way, but it can still do some damage. And this is about how you spend it. This is about understanding how to use Facebook ads. This is understanding what you're gonna put out. This is understanding how to hyper target, all of that. But on top of that, it's the strategy. Rather than sending people away from your ad to Spotify, for example, or YouTube if you want to see a video, why don't we start thinking with small budgets, let's bring people in so we can look after them. Here is the party. You are in the party. You are the party host. You are the leader and you're saying, come on in, let's be in this together and you are gonna look after them with value in your social media. Now that's cheaper for a start because instead of sending people away from the platform, which will cost you more per click, you are saying, bring people in. Let's get that brand awareness and bring them into the platform, which will be rewarded by Facebook, by Instagram, because you're keeping them on that 
that platform. Now, Facebook ads are fiddly and they do take time to learn. And I hate it when I hear people say things like, Facebook ads don't work, which is stupid. Of course, Facebook ads work. It's how you use them and understanding them. But there's plenty of resources out there that you can learn this. You can learn it on YouTube. And don't forget, DKMBA, I've put this together myself specifically for you to advertise music with your Facebook ads. There's courses in there. So if that helps, then go and check out that link in the description below. But when it comes to Facebook ads, this to me is all about timing because if you can get a thousand people across to your Spotify over a period of time, over a month, for example, that's fantastic. If you can take the same amount of people and squash those people into doing that over 24 hours, now that is how you get attention on Spotify. That is where Spotify starts going, oh, what will happen then? That's impressive. And then you're more likely from that spike to start getting a playlist, to start getting Spotify to take notice of you. This $100 on Facebook ads could make all of the difference because of that sliding doors moment. You never know who's going to see the video. You never know who's going to hear that song. So it doesn't take a lot, but you do need to know how to maximize this so you don't waste that money. Number five, playlists, or as I like to call them, pay to play lists. When you pay to get onto people's playlists, you are taking a huge gamble, a massive gamble for many, many reasons. But there's a couple of ways of doing this. Number one, there's things like Submit Hub or Playlist Push. Now you are not paying to get on someone's playlist. You are paying for someone to listen to your music and decide whether or not they will put you on their playlist. Very, very different. And you can get some good results from that and it might cost you a couple of quid, but that's what we're talking about today. But then after that, there's the more straightforward, let me just pay you money to get on a playlist. I see these offers all of the time. Now there are some huge problems with this. Number one, if someone's just gonna take your money and put your music on a playlist, it means probably they're doing that with many other people, which means they're not taking real, real care of their playlist. This is just a financial thing. And imagine if I said that to you about your band. Just, just do me a favor, stick that song in your set because we like it. And you go, yeah, give me some money and I'll do it. All of a sudden, it does take away a lot of that artistic integrity. So it's the same thing with playlists, the same thing with radio. When someone's prepared to take your money and just whack your song in there, probably it's gonna be full of bots or it's gonna be full of people that probably don't like the type of music that you might be putting out there. Now, whilst you might get some good results, all of a sudden you might get a bunch of plays that spike your Spotify, this could be a problem if they're bots or if they're the wrong audience. For example, and I get this regularly, someone comes along and says, my fans also like is not quite matching up to my music. And it's because they've been put on some playlist and all of a sudden, all of the people on that playlist like K-pop or something else and your metal band doesn't fit together. So then it's very, very clear that you've either paid to play or something has gone drastically wrong. You have to remember that Spotify is algorithm based just like anything else, which means it's monitoring everything. It's monitoring who's listening, how long people are listening, when they're listening. So if you go and get 10,000 people to listen to 10 seconds of your song, then you have just started to break that algorithm. You've told Spotify that people don't really like your music. If you get 10,000 people who like a certain type of music, across to your Spotify, which is different to yours, you are telling Spotify that these people like your music when they might not. So you have to be incredibly careful of the algorithm. And that goes just as importantly for when it comes to Facebook ads as it does for pay to playlists. Number six, the hired specialist, which could be fantastic for you, but has got pros and cons. For example, let's say you want someone to write a press release. Fantastic, someone who is a specialist writer, great with words and understands how to put all of that together into a press release. Brilliant, pay your money, then you get that back and it's down to you and your control to get that press release out there. I think that works. The problem is if you're gonna hire maybe a PR company, you're gonna hire a plugger, you're gonna hire a manager, etc. A hundred bucks is not a lot. So if you're paying someone a hundred bucks for your release single, you're probably not gonna get a lot of experience. You're not gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. Now that could be hugely problematic because you're handing people 
the keys to the Ferrari. You're saying, this is my brand. This is me. This is everything I stand for. And then you're giving it to someone else and saying, please keep that safe. Now, if you're doing that for small amounts of money, you are taking a massive gamble with you, your music, but more importantly, your reputation. I am all for bringing in some extra people. I am all for delegating. I'm all for specialists, but you have to be very, very careful with who you're bringing in because whoever comes in is still representing you. They're still representing your music, your message to your fans and to the music industry. So whilst it could be a good one, this to me is a big gamble. So in conclusion, there's five main takeaways. Number one, set up the party first. Before you start showing people your music, trying to get them to come in and then fall away because they haven't actually paid attention is pointless. Make sure that you've set up the party before you throw the bait out. Make sure when people are gonna come in, they're gonna stay in so that you can look after them. Number two, figure out what you can do yourself. Anything that you can do yourself, do yourself. Anything that you need to bring a specialist in, at that point, find the right people. But let's try and prioritize what you can do and what you don't need to do yourself. Number three, be realistic with your targets. This is not about one release. Anyone who thinks they're just gonna put that first single out and all of a sudden, look at that, I'm number one in the billboard charts. Where's my millions? It's just a bit deluded. This is about how one release fits into a release strategy, which means number one goes into number two, three, four. You need to be thinking ahead. So be realistic with each target and make sure that they lead from one into the next. Number four, learn how to use Facebook ads sparingly. Make sure that if you are gonna put money into it, you can make a small amount of money go a long way. Facebook ads are the greatest type of advertising that has ever been made in the history of mankind. Because of the targeting, it means it's super cheap to be able to get your message in front of people, but you do need to know how that works. And number five, if you're bringing in a professional, then just remember this is your reputation and you live and die by your reputation and your brand. So be very, very careful before you bring in someone who's gonna come in to work with you. Make sure they're vetted, make sure they're trained, and make sure they know exactly what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Go and get the most out of your dollar. If you can do me a favor and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Come and be a part of this community because I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of what we're building at the moment, especially in this tough time with lockdowns, etc. So hit that like, hit that subscribe. And more importantly, if you wanna work with me, then the link to DK Music Business Academy is below. That is a chance for us to work together on your music, on your music releases, on your growth and growth strategies of social media. Uh, and if that helps, then hit that link and get involved. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.